Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Jack Devine, and uh, welcome back to another episode of uh, Jack Snacks here. Today, I'm getting back on the horse. It's been a little while since I've done one of these things, and wanted to, you know, just say hi and check in with everybody, see how everybody's doing, and... Uh, you know, make a couple of announcements and just hold a hold a little class here on on outside playing and some other approaches and talk about some ideas and things that I see consistently misrepresented on online regarding certain elements of the style of guitar that I've chosen to kind of dive into. I'm not sure whether or not you guys are you know totally down with it, but pretty much. <sighs> I, I focus on Grateful Dead stuff a lot of the time, and I, it's what I, I play, you know, for lack of a better word, professionally or at, at an aggressive hobbyist level, I guess that would be the better way of looking at it because there isn't too much money in it. But the idea of sharing this music that's uh, been so meaningful and powerful for me and super educational as well, you know, and provides me with a spectacular platform for... Um, Teaching, you know, I think it's been a, a real godsend for a lot of my students to be able to talk about what what is going on in a lot of these Grateful Dead tunes. And one of the more befuddling ones that that I've come across is obviously working with Uncle John's band. Um, that song is is a real challenge for a lot of players, even though it seems deceptively folky and straight ahead. Um, but it really isn't. It's got a lot of odd meter in it. You know, you're dealing with the whole bunch of the song is in four and then there's these little three bars that happen in there so you got there you will right you know first, first day first days are the hardest the hardest days that business right well while you're doing that you're sitting there keeping the, this kind of thing together right but then every now and again at the end of the verse you go one, two, three. But sometimes you have to sing over the second clunk of those and it can be very challenging for, I think, people who are singing and playing the guitar. If you're just playing along with it, I, I suppose it's easier or maybe it's not, not quite as gnarly. But uh, anyway, guys, I just figured, you know what, I'd check in and say hi and see if anybody's got anything on their mind or wants to talk about stuff. I've been uh, busy, actually. I've been really busy. It's been spectacular to get to coach or um, teach so much guitar over the last couple of years. I'm super excited about all my students who are making progress, and some are some are flying the coop. You know, I, I, uh, I'm happy to see it when they when they do leave the nest. It's a it's a good feeling because it it makes you aware of the fact. Sorry, my uh, microphone's a little hotsy totsy here. It makes you aware that you've done a good job, you know. If somebody can feel like secure in their positioning within their playing, to say, "Hey, thanks, thanks, teacher. I, I really appreciate the time we spent together," and then, uh, you know, fly off. I think of that as a, as like a, a sign of a job well done. Now, granted, you know, if if you have chemistry issues with your teacher, I think that's obviously a you know problem. Anyway, um, so some peop some new students, some old students, saying adios, but hopefully staying friends. Um, playing with a couple of bands and getting around and having a good old time and figured I would talk to you a little bit about what's happening here at the end of this jam here. We're, we're looking at um, a song is, uh, you know, an odd meter. It's not, it's not in four. We're going... Uh, boom. So that's the, that's the business at the end of Uncle John's, right? So... So... Right? So it's G major, C major, and then D, kind of minor, but the, it, there's a lot of that kind of nine sound to it, okay? So just, you know, just got to keep track of that groove while you're playing over top of it. It can be very befuddling. So... lot of opportunity to go out way outside. I don't always start out with the crazy psychedelic stuff. Sometimes I'll start out with something a little bit more like just more like I think 
beats, actually. Your crazy. Hey, that's my telephone going bonkers there next to the uh, converter. That's an awful sound. I always wanted to uh, figure out how to get this thing to actually come up live so I could see if anybody's talking to me. I can't ever seem to get it to work anymore. They, they keep updating, quote unquote, the YouTube platform and it's problematic for me. Yeah, I can't seem to get it to to like me. All right, well, so much for that. So that's the idea, is that we're thinking out of a D minor sound, okay, but definitely not your regular old, this kind of D minor. You want to be thinking a D Dorian sound, okay? Because if you've got that, that G major, all right, and C, and then a D minor sound, that makes C right? The one chord, actually, and this is the two chord, and this is the five chord, right? Whenever you see, you know, that's a two, five, one, but it kind of resolves on the, the and it spends more time on the two chord. So we kind of treat it like a kind of a Dorian sound, right? So when we hear that, we hear... Plenty of room. No need to rush to your climax and your solo when you play this tune. All right, you heard that little chromaticism between the uh, G and the A note. That flat five, totally welcome at the party, especially when you start to go into interstellar. Okay, when you start to stack in that the fuzz and stuff like that. Really, don't be afraid to utilize some of these uh, these symmetries. Right there. Okay, and that also happens here. Okay, so you could... A lot of that kind of thing for the outro, outro uh, the outside sounds. If you come down in fours, you get like a... Pretty fun. Or if you ascend in fours... A lot of opportunity to peek out, you know. Sorry, let me turn off some of that space. Just remember when you come down to the high E string, you don't want to be playing that C sharp particularly, not unless it preceded by the C. That's totally fine, right? Like that, right? Lots of opportunity to work on your speed playing over top, top of something like that because you can deliberately extend over the bar, right? Which is definitely a secret to how to make an outside sound is, is to play past the assumed spot of finishing or start well ahead of the assumed start point, right? So instead of going boom, do dum do da da instead of ending your phrase there, continue past there. Right? Or starting after that starts, instead of going and coming in right on the one of that. We're in seven, seven, eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Right, like that kind of thing. Okay, basically just D minor. 
pentatonic, and then we're going to add in a couple of color tones. Okay, and maybe this. Okay, it gives it a real outside Floydy kind of thing for sure, that Dorian tonality. And if we just bring that chromatic note. the party definitely some fun stuff can happen okay like i was saying as we ascend in fours we might want to consider how to do that kind of thing right we might want to think about the right hand picking patterns that that go into making that smooth and effortless sounding rather than uh choppy through a lot of alternate picking so it's something i've been you know, dishing out to the to the people that I work with as sharing rather than going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Lots and lots and lots of that choppy stuff. We can shave off a few uh, a few notes uh, or pick strokes rather. Right, do one hammer on here like that. All right, and then do a directional pick stroke on the third chunk of this uh, the sequence. So if we do hammer on, alternate picked, and then directional. Hammer on, alternate, directional. So we can really start to stack up the speed that way. Right, so even with a modicum of overdrive, like that kind of sound is a lot smoother than what I'm when, if I tried to alternate pick every one of those, pff, forget about it, crash and burn. I just do it automatically now. Skip, like that. All right, and you can do it here. Really, really helpful mechanic to get to under your, your belt here. All right, so that's, uh, you know. So on the last, what would have been a pick stroke, you want to do a hammer on there on the D string. Right there. Or, right, or just whichever is the last note, right? You want to do a hammer on. Okay, that gives you enough time to come down, up, and under and then do an upstroke. So just isolating this move right here. Let's turn off some of that echo. Just isolating that. Gets you. A lot of speed, okay? And you want to be able to take that through all your different modes right now. We're in, the, obviously, the second mode of C major, so if that we, would, we could practice it in C. That would be. So yeah, every time I change strings, hammer on. Sorry. Then, uh, hammer on there. 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 And then on the way up, you are gonna go. down up down up down up all the way up there but we're shifting with the pinky shift 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 on the way back it's opposite right all right uh anyway a lot to talk about there so if we're looking at how to do these outside sounds i love using the octaver and a lot of uh a lot of overdrive to create like a very ominous kind of sound during that section that see how prevalent that uh prominent that ninth is that e note right almost like a synth you know that's kind of where I'm, i like that sound a lot
We like to do more of the octaver with the clean sound a lot of the time in there, but uh, I guess I've optimized it for more of like my tendencies, which are a little bit more, you know, noodly or shreddy. Um, anyway, really great tune. Just tough, tough. A lot, lot of little subtleties there. If you're the singer, a lot of shit to deal with. Lots of dropped bars, you know, so you're in four and then you're in three, then you're in four, then you're in three. So hang in there and watch out for that. All right. Another song I see a lot of people talking about and teaching incorrectly is Help on the Way, and in particular the Slipknot arpeggios. So let's take a little second to get to that. Give me a second to change my, uh, my sound. All right, so we got, how is this? Oh, hey, good to see you again, always. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks for welcoming me back. So we've got, you know, the old, uh, all right, so how are we doing that? Right. Conventional wisdom would be alternate picking, right? Right, that's very hard. Down, up, down, up, down, up, all that. Ah, hurts. Heaven forbid the drummer is a little excited or maybe, uh, you know, animated and counts it in a couple of beats too fast. And there, there you go. So I use a, a system. Well, first of all, I play it with the pinky leading. Right? I see some people who make the, in my opinion, the terrible error of thinking about it. Right, like that. I'm playing it with the pinky ahead of the the root, as opposed to on the root. Right. So basically, what's happened here is I, I'm 100% convinced of this. Garcia being uh, creative, but at the same time a human being. Why wouldn't he be fascinated by the fact that his song is in F minor with that shape, and then goes to the that shape again and then later on he's using if you just bring the shape down one and up you end up with the diminished sound of right just scared the learn this is the best version oh okay of, of slipknot or help on the way or is that i guess you're probably talking about the same thing uh, great song. I really love the the whole triptych. You know, but all three tunes are spectacular, and one one awesome palate cleanser inside of Franklin's. Yeah, help on the way. All right. So a lot of people they they they're 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 playing it wrong. If you ask me, if you're doing yeah that no. So I'm going up, slide up, down, or. Right. Sometimes I just do like almost like a little sweep, but I think it's a little bit punchier when you go again I'm using pull off. So slide in, then down or up, it doesn't really matter. So. You're going to want to practice that little move, the pinky pull off, and then kind of two directionally consistent upstrokes. Going to come in really handy during the. Much, much easier than going. Right. Doing all alternate in there. Very, very tough to do. All right, and I, I don't really think it actually sets sets up the right groove either, believe it or not. Even though that's the way the maestro did it, uh, I would tell everybody who's learning the song, consider, strongly consider using some... The guitar has really moved. I've been trying to pick every note. I don't think there's any need to pick every note there. All right, I, I just don't think there's any gain. All right, so if we're doing... All right, if we're doing... Uh, Right, 
right? That kind of sound over the solo. So then we get into, you know, we're playing. Oh, it's the other thing. Don't don't kill yourself with this, you know, but, it, you know, you're playing at F minor. That's the chord, right? It's basically like a B flat, seven, nine chord, right? That's a, it sounds flat there. I'll see about it. What note am I playing here that's out of tune? Oh, yeah. That's our sound, right? Kind of a jazzy B flat nine chord, right? B flat. Sorry, so if you're hearing that, you know, uh, there's some online educators that are teaching this thing the wrong way. They're like, they're going like, like that or something, I saw. Like, it's just some weird stuff. It's not that. Okay, then, then you can come up and go. All right, I kind of cheat on that part because I'm usually singing and I'll do. I think Garcia did this. Right. You like to do the slide and stay on the D string. I come. And then usually, rather than going up, I'll go. I'll do like single notes there and sing that in unison and then come up here and go. Uh, just play that while the other guitar player comes up and grabs, hopefully. Let's talk about that a little bit. That's kind of a nice nuanced part that a lot of people get a little confused on. So let's get the mic a little closer so I can deliver my ideas here a little bit better. There we go. All right. So if we're doing uh, Paradise Waits. Okay, so we're going to be playing like a C sharp, a C minor. And then you want to stay, kind of lift your pinky up. And then don't focus on the low A string. Just kind of focus on the bottom, or I guess the top four strings. Okay, you're basically forming like the top part of an E flat major chord, but it's not. It's really more like you're going like that. And that's an interesting thing over top of the F minor. We're hearing pretty dark, actually, right? So, so you got uh, okay. So that note right there is just—it's just a minor. All right, we're just going do do do. So basically, getting that Dorian sound again out of that F minor. Right. All right. It's not like a whole new chord. It's not like we're going. That is not correct. All right. I know there's another guy out there, super funny, really charming, well meaning, but that's not it. He teaches it with a D minor. <laughs> Don't do that. All right. So, uh, so. Paradise waits. You got to get that little. That little thing in there, okay? So, so that's gonna be ring, pinky, and then barred. One of these sus chords, right? It looks almost like a B flat nine chord, but we're playing from from the D string. And give it a good, okay? And then every other time you go. Well, actually, no, not every other time. The first time you do that, uh, the problem is the verse has an interesting structure where we get three lines. I think, or no, sorry, it's two lines and then kind of the, that pre-chorus in there that... And then it comes back and sings one more line to kind of round it out. And then the chorus structure starts again, so it kind of feels like it starts 
one time ahead of when it actually does start. And if you if you get wise to the pattern, the first one is the, all right, then the next one is. Where we do come up and sorry, still not done, right? So that's the actual structure of the verse. And then we come back up. And now we're starting verse two, and we're going to be doing the... Okay, that's the structure. It's it's interesting and a little, a little difficult to grab onto because a lot of times the lyrics are formatted in a way that doesn't really show how Robert Hunter wrote the stanzas. Okay, so you might want to just consider that and kind of watch the lyrics as they happen and then listen to where those little kicks happen, the little descending Dorian Six thing. It took me a while to catch on to it. It's actually a bandmate of mine that turned me on to it, so thank you to Colin. Colin Tabor kicking ass. All right, so anyway, um, here we are. So we've got that that business, right? Then we've got... Uh, what is it? And anybody unfamiliar with this wonderful shape... Right? It's like, uh, kind of looks like the top part of a C sharp major seven chord or the bottom of the top part of a uh, G sharp six chord, right? But it's also a great voicing of an F minor chord. Okay, so just like we're, right? We're just hearing F minor from its third. Okay, so just clock that. All right, uh, solo solo is pretty interesting. It's got some really nice kind of things over top of this kind of minor blues thing. So uh, two, three, F, C. That move right there. Kind of playing off this. Right, you can add it there. Or all right then two, three, four. All right, that is some tricky stuff. <laughs> I remember transcribing that. All right. What is it? No, I can't remember it. <laughs> Two, three, four, boom. Yeah, so you've got a one opportunity for a directional downstroke there that kind of helps me stay clear of it. So after that downstroke on the pinky, on that F note, you can go and pull off. And down, up, sorry, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, pull off. That's it. Up. That lick. Every time I play that, if somebody in the crowd's like, ah, All right? That's a nice feeling when you play something right in a song as ambitious and difficult as this, and somebody in the crowd is like on their toes. You know, it's a nice feeling for sure. Because I don't, I don't really spend too much time trying to ape the exact lines, but when I do, it's kind of nice to get a little props for it for sure. Okay, so that line again. Up, down, down, chromatically from B flat to C. And you'll see that my right hand is doing that directional picking thing I'm always on about. So up, down, down, right into the G string. Right? 
So this is definitely the weirdest thing there. Playing the last note on the string with your pinky and then the first note that you play on the high E with your middle finger. That is a strange sound. Right, and that's... And then... A lot of dynamics there on that G. Na, na, na. You want to build up there. Or, and this little number. That little chromatically on the G and D, D and G. Right. All right. So let's say you made it through that big long jam and you get to the end and you're at the wee. times and on the fourth time you get uh you just get that one little lick in there all right so be prepared for a up down down up or a down 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 up or a, yeah so you the last one you would do is right and you come up two frets on the d still on the pinky and then you get this number. And now we take the whole thing up a minor third, a uh, whole step rather. Right? And then again, we would come up and do. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's just talk about how we play that diminished sequence out off of our pinky shape. It's the same shape that we've been using the whole tune. Right? So then we would go up, up. Okay, so this is where the kind of downstroke pull off and then rotational action in the wrist and then two upstrokes really minimizes the, the pain and suffering of this song. Right, and it affords me the ability to not give a shit whether or not we play it five or ten clicks faster on the metronome by mistake somehow. Right, I can't always count on being, uh, you know, if it would be pretty ambitious to play it, uh, you know, in my opinion. So if it's if it's hard for me, I think it would probably be hard for most players. So I came up with the system that keeps the accents on downstrokes where they belong, and kind of helps push the weak the implied weaker notes in the arpeggios a little further back so you get a little bit more topography to the line a little bit more back and forward within the dynamics of it rather than what when i play it uh like oh what's that oh hey hi it's nice to see you too so um sorry i got a little comment up here on my screen so if we're doing this right we are going Okay, I'm using, you can either use one down stroke, like that. But the temptation is to brush through too fast. So you could do, so that's down, up, down, up, down, right? But it's these ones. Down, pull off, up, up. That's the one.
type of technique is so much more laid back on the right hand. And as an old codger like myself, man, I love not having to kill myself to, to make it sound nice. So let's just look at what's happening there on any one of those da 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 da's, right? One, two, three, fours. We're going down, pull off, up, up. So much easier than going. It's literally twice the work. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, as opposed to. Right? So you can really get away with murder there, okay? But you just gotta learn the timing of it. so much faster than any other way I can play it, all right? So I think that's time well spent, right? Gosh, I hate being up on this mic. Okay, and then, so if you're doing the diminished arpeggio after playing the G minor section, Right there, uh, starting on the uh, C, so we're playing a uh, C diminished. All right, and then we're going to end up coming up to E minor 7. Right, that's the first time. Uh, yep, slip knot. Okay, so... So if we came out of that... Uh, come up to that D. Pardon me, guys, I jumped over one of the arpeggios. So we would be going... Okay, so that's probably one of the tougher jumps in the tune. Sorry, uh, that would be... Right? Okay, and you might want to give a little gliss in there. He does that on the album. I love that. Okay, it's just very dependable that, that. It's kind of a George Benson move, actually. Okay, we're just kind of doing that. Okay, so first, uh, we, uh, right? Okay, time jump. Same thing in G minor. Okay, now you might need to hit that last note there to slide it up there. Okay, so that would be... that. So practicing that in isolation, right? Ah. And then getting from that index finger up to there. That's kind of a hard bitch of a move. Yep. Oftentimes I will abbreviate lines and go duba 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 Right, not put that last note in there. But. Okay, and now we add the little gliss. usually play just the three note arpeggio there instead of I never hear that F sharp in my ear so I don't play it but maybe there's a version out there with that in there back okay so just if you don't know this is a little B minor 7 arpeggio and then we just do the same idea but rather than that minor shape we do down the F sharp minor shape okay or maybe it's A major I'm not sure what the Rhythm guitar is playing. I'm terrible at knowing what the bob chords are in here. Uh, 
All right. Yeah. Sorry. If, uh, if, if I'm counting out loud, that's that's generally seen as bad form. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, but I might be doing it just so that people can follow along. But if we're doing the D section. So that's stupid. All right. So that's the B minor, F sharp minor. And we come back to and do the same thing symmetrically back two whole steps. I mean, two half step. Well, one whole step, sorry. Right? Sorry. Okay, now we're going to fall back on the same shape that we've been using this pinky pull up and boom. Right? But when we're here, it does that. Right? When we come here, we're going to be doing this. Okay, and that's the same one we were using here. So this pull off this downstroke pull off and roll with two upstrokes move is just all over the song all right now it yeah sure it's totally an opportunity for you to kill yourself on an alternate picking if you want to get your uh, your right arm in, in top shape all right I'm, I'm not going to discourage you from playing it like Garcia did not at all I just uh, I don't really see the the reward from the the risk I think it's um also, it's a great opportunity to learn just a more economical approach to this thing. So, and by, by the way, you'll see that I want da 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 da. I want those accents to be like, so they land very conveniently on the more profound downward strokes. So, so that's, you know, right? So once we come back there, we're doing back to our initial shape of pinky, uh, like a four, one, two, four. We're going to do that leading from the A. It's a B minor seven arpeggio again. Kind of like if we were just down an octave, right? And we're going to bring this down. Uh, maybe it's more like a D. D6. I don't know. I don't know what the good, I don't know what Bobby's doing. Okay, then down two. And then here. So that's. And we slide up with the middle finger if you're playing it right. Sorry. Then, then you get the, the really confusing part where you go. That's three. Then on the fourth, you go to four. Again. Do that one little quick little do ba do do Now we come to our pinky on the D string, and we go. And then back. Up two frets. And then the shit. Okay, so that's our downbeat into the, the little coda section that leads into Franklin's. So that would be all in. Or just uh, do a... Right, and now we're back into just an A chord. Right, and then the C add nine. Right, like that. two notes together. All right, I think there's that, or that's a nice move where you pre-bend from D, come down. 
more of a Bob idea, though. All right, and then you're, if you want to do the late 80s kind of the 80s and up, you know, you're coming up and grabbing that little, that bar chord. Or actually, I think he's doing that. And he's doing that. He's a lot of vibrato on those triads. Eh? A lot of that. He loves to do that. So Franklin's is a whole nother discussion, but primarily what I'm mostly interested in talking about with uh, is a couple of those chordal discrepancies I see in some of the uh, other online educators who, well-meaning though they may be, they are incorrect in their analysis about whether or not that's a D minor chord when they go, uh, when you hear the part, right? That's right. It's just basically do do do. Right. Somebody else is going to the bass, it's going to the four chord there. Right, again, which is gonna be this kind of sound. It's gonna be a minor. Sorry, it's not it's not like that. So we're seeing a B7 with a nine and its third. So it has two, it has like a dissonance, it has a second in there. So that's right. So that's what you're getting there. I don't know what the Bob stuff is doing, but it's definitely not. There's no fucking D minor in that in that part. All right, so um, no D minor in the whole tune. If we're talking about the jam, uh, you know, the big long atonal thing where we're getting the, you know, the. That's really some fun stuff. Right, and you've got that crazy, uh, I think that's the, the lick off Blues for Allah. Let's lower that volume a little bit. Right, so. If you're doing that, what I want you to, what I'd want you to do is kind of see that the band is going to be doing kind of like this, kind of. Uh, let's let's set up a little, let's set up a little goofy ball, goofball loop there. Hopefully that won't be too loud here. So if we're looking at... All right, we're really looking to get um, like an A minor Dorian with a flat five and a major seven. Okay, so that's that's a bit of a made up scale. That doesn't really exist, right? But we're definitely seeing those patterns over and over and over again in the lines that Garcia was choosing. So I don't know whether or not he's thinking about it as primarily just like an A minor with that that, that element going on. And then occasionally modifying that structure to have more tension in it by going 
and coming up and grabbing that major seven and bending up into the root like he was playing melodic minor. Because it isn't a straight melodic minor at all. But let's look at that opening line, which is kind of a signature line. Two, three, four. Something like that, right? So chromatically up through the flat five, and it included that major seven. Then it comes to the root and down to the six. And I think there's a little flub of him hitting the open D string like that a little bit. Which, I mean, all makes fine sense, right? And then that next line. Right? So we've got this interesting kind of structured... Right? That kind of sound where we're hearing that... Again, flat five. Set opposite that flat seven. All right. And then up here, we get that weird. <laughs> very bizarre series of notes. Okay, very cool. Sorry, it's a little too much ambience there. Major seven. Oh yeah, there's some interesting stuff going on there. I'm not playing it note for note, but these are definitely the more critical notes that he's playing in there. That right. Right, and then all right, and then that, that you know that whole right. That's over that big D. Right? Come up here and get one of these. I love that. <laughs> it makes me so happy every time I play it. don't have to do too much moving anybody that you see playing that like this they're, they're just they're i watch them play and i'm like ouch ouch that looks like it must hurt to think like that thinking about the root and the notes coming up rather than back and playing out out of this so much easier with all your pinky pull-offs okay so while i have covered that for some students in the past on private lessons and whatnot um and i may have even talked about this from time to time, that rotational business, huge thing, just an absolute godsend for taking those, uh, those kind of things, those kind of more jazzy, that kind of thing. So I use that a lot, even in, uh, something more like mundane, like, like an eyes of the world jam, like we're just doing like, uh, Right, 
just doing that kind of a... A lot, lot easier to get that. later 90s or later 80s kind of uh, eyes jams sometimes Garcia would break into some nice chords and this is my rendering of that idea it's not it's not note for note or anything like that but let's just get a let's get a reasonable facsimile of the the progression right one two three four E major seven B minor seven A major Okay, so the idea is that, you know, there's definitely a lot of noodling that you've been playing. So there's only so much that you can really... just good jams right but then when you get to here you might want to go that kind of thing okay so that's playing out of this uh, E major chord then let go of the uh, sorry the cable is warbling here nope that's not good either That is the problem with not being an AV guy. All right, so if we're looking at our E chord here, we're going. Da -da, we're looking at this melody. Or let's do that. All right, that's our first little bit. So E major, E major 7, come up, grab A6, and then go back to E major, which you could have gone if you wanted to, but I like, sorry, 3, 4, okay, then come up and grab, uh, what is it, uh, there it is, so that's E major 7. E major 7 add 9. Okay, and then over that, so we're doing E major 7, E major 7 add 9, then E major 6, then just E major. And then we're going to go and grab that little shape that I showed you before. It's like, uh, looks like a D chord, right, with the pinky down on the B string. And that's a B minor leading from its minor third. That's the root of the B, fifth minor third octave of that minor third. God damn, my B string is way out of tune. Listen to that. Something, something is weird. Ugh. That's the trouble with some of these older guitars. They, they definitely are a little wonky sometimes. One, two, three, and four.
okay? And you want to be light about it. You don't want to be going like... It's not Corey Wong. It's just too much. That's just way too much. You don't need to f- fuck as, uh, every time like that. It doesn't have to be this nasty thing where you're just asserting too hard, right? Just a little... Just nice and smooth. One, two, three, four. Nice little silky sound, right? That's kind of a slick uh, Motown or Phillies from the 70s sound. Kind of like a Barry White record, like, yeah, baby. It's on. One of my strings is really not getting along. All right, so that's a little major seven triad right there. All right, we're just barring G, B, and E at the, uh, what is that, 15th, 16th fret? All right. Because right, that's an E chord. And all we're doing is taking the root and bringing it back there. All right, so we could go la di da. All right, and then we're going to grab this. Okay. And that's the octave of where we started. trick is to keep one finger on while you slide. All right, then come up and grab your B minors. And then A majors, right? So those would be. You could do that or. Okay, and what am I doing there? A major. Right? You'll see that half the time that I'm playing, I'm actually playing into like that chord shape, right? I might even be, you know. Lots of different approaches that we can get to there. None of which really sound that dynamite with this anemic sound. It's a little too clean. Uh, but, you know, that's pretty much it. Now, something that's been going on uh, is I have a, a, a great happiness and joy of teaching this music, and uh, I love sharing it with you guys. Sometimes for free, and sometimes, you know, people are um, asking me to either play with them or teach them a series of tunes for an upcoming show, or I get hired as a more long-term kind of uh, golf pro kind of guy that knows this stuff and understands some of the outlying areas that aren't necessarily immediately considered when you're thinking about what's going on inside of the Grateful Dead music and all the theoretical elements that are kind of connected to it and... There's a lot of different perspectives because the band is, has this kind of sprawl to its influences, right? You've got, you know, blues and bluegrass and jazz and psychedelia and rock, all right? And then whatever the hell that crazy mad space stuff they do, they got the cowboy stuff, the Bakersfield country, all right? You got all kinds of just, you know, folky jug band stuff. Just an amazing, an amazing swath of Americana, all kind of wrapped up in this one weird sheet of LSD, and uh, all led by this leaderless, you know, kind of group. Spectacular history, tons of tons of great romance uh, about the band itself and how uh, you know it 
it evolved over time and everything like that. It's just it's a spectacular kind of backdrop for the educational side of things because there's so many songs and so many different styles and so many different ideas at the core of why things sound like they do. And you could be talking about, oh, well, like you could use eyes to teach somebody how to solo over just a, a one chord major seventh jam, right? That was like, I don't know about it, you, but that was probably the first song I ever played that had a major seventh chord featured in it so prominently. I mean, it's just like, when you hear that, I was like, wow, what is that smooth thing? I, I mean, granted, I had probably heard, you know, Marvin Gaye's uh, Mother, Mother, Mercy, Mercy Me or whatever that is. Mother, Mother, right, that tune? I probably heard that and I'd probably heard it before, but I'd never really kind of tethered that theoretical stuff to a band that I was so fascinated with. You know, there's a difference between hearing it in an isolated pop song that you hear, you know, sometimes on the radio growing up and the way that I used to get records and bring them home and open them up and look at the gatefold and look at the pictures. And there was only a limited amount of artwork and information available. So you stared at the same stuff over and over again. And these images become iconic after a while, mainly because there's such a dearth of them, right? But you know, that first album with all the collage artwork, a ton of good stuff on it. And it's just super fun, you know, the, and, uh, you know, anyway, so using that as a backdrop to learn how to play over that one song, that one chord jam, that was great. But if you keep going, you learn how to play over a two tonal center jam, right? E major seven. And then once we do this, we've actually changed to playing over the two chord of A major and then into the the one chord of uh, our second tonal center. So there's a two two tonal center jam that you have to figure out. Like you can't just stay in E major over top of the B minor. It sounds awful. All right. Same over the same over the A chord. So it was a good good thing for me when I started growing up and figuring out this music. Really unlocked a lot of doors and made it so that like oh, I don't I don't really sweat it too much when I play with other folks because I can figure stuff out on the fly because I have a lot of this undercarriage. That's the fundamentals from this music. And uh, I, I just love it and adore it and teach it lovingly with reverence and respect and at the same time a willingness to have allow it to evolve and not have it be like, oh, the only way to do it is this way, right? So anyway, um, it's with that in mind that I kind of sat around and I've been realizing that the, the, the preponderance of you know, bad information out there I'm starting to think about maybe doing like, I mean, I, I was always at loathe to have like a method or a course or something like that, but it does seem to make some sense to isolate and kind of codify columns of Garcia's approach to this music. And I was thinking about, you know, maybe taking an informal poll as to whether or not anybody would be interested in something like that if I was to put together like an advanced beginners and intermediate level course, then they would probably be, you know, some varied number of like six lessons, 12 lessons or 24 lessons or something like that. And kind of pigeonholing these eight or whatever. I, 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 I did, I did some thinking actually, which not, nobody's ever really accused me of before, but, um, about like, what are the, the eight or 10 or five or whatever ideas that you really have to have under your belt to to really go forward with this music and make the most of it so i don't know if anybody's got the energy to write me a little little blurb saying that they'd be down uh you know let me know uh, if there's enough demand for something like that i would definitely i would definitely do it no leave it to me to wait 71 minutes into a live stream to make my pitch but <laughs> you know there it is i hope everybody's happy and uh, doing well Anyway, um, I think I'm pretty much done here. Uh, I hope everybody had a fun time, and uh, thank you for the warm welcome back. If um, And if you are interested in studying with me, obviously, you know, you could always reach out or write in the comments section of this, or you could 
contact me at jack underscore divine at hotmail.com. So funny. I feel like I've left that that information all over the fucking internet. And I have people like, I have no idea how to reach you, dude. And I'm like, really? It's everywhere. But Jack, J-A-C-K underscore the little uh, D-E-V-I-N-E at hotmail.com. Uh, or you can just leave it, drop me a line right here at uh, in the comment section. I don't check the email address associated with this thing because I'm... Uh, I'm a technophobe, but this is the same email address I've had since I was dragged kicking and screaming into this this awful fucking digital age that's destroyed how people interact and connect with people. Even though it's, I guess, afforded me the opportunity to connect with you guys. <laughs> so I guess it's with no small amount of irony that I say that. I'm off my rocker. Am I really? Did I do something bad? I'm so sorry. I think anybody who knows me knows that I'm I'm not I'm not totally crazy, but All right. Well, folks are finding me annoying, I suppose. I, I should probably duck out of here. All right, everybody, peace, love, happiness from Brooklyn, New York, and uh, play more Grateful Dead music. I'll catch up with you later. Bye.